This video is a what-if scenario of how the total drama timeline gets altered if Sierra hadn't blown up the plane. From the end of World Tour all the way into All Stars. This is going to be a bit different from my last what-if because instead of dealing with two separate timelines with a character swap, this is going to be one continuous timeline. Anyway, let's begin. <laughs> So in this version, Sierra decides to hold off on making the cake so the ash never falls off the cake and makes the plane explode, meaning Sierra still has immunity since she actually won the challenge this episode. And because she doesn't get disqualified, the vote plays out as normal, which means Alejandro is eliminated 3 to 1. Now because the plane is still here, I think Chris would just fly everyone, including Alejandro, back to Hawaii instead of racing all the way from Drumheller. Rather, they'd have to complete some Hawaiian obstacle course like fire hoops or something, with it still ending with the boat race to the finish. And I'm gonna be honest, I think Heather loses here. Yeah, she was a very strong player this season, but she's going up against a 2v1 here. And I have no doubt that Sierra could literally carry Cody to the finish line. Even if Cody tries to do it himself as to not take the easy route and actually want to win on his own merits, he'd obviously just get saved by Sierra along the way if he slips up anyway. And Sierra would plow through any and all obstacles with Cody so fast that Heather wouldn't have nearly enough time to catch up. Alejandro would probably just be in the peanut gallery, but even if he wasn't, I don't think he would help out Heather either. In fact, I think he'd actively be trying to go against her. Yeah, yeah, I know, both of them are secretly in love with each other despite not wanting to admit it, and if we were talking about a different season, I'd definitely see things going differently. But you gotta remember that Heather literally just broke her promise to not screw Alejandro over after he saved her from being stuck underneath the boulder. So I don't think he'd be so quick to forgive and forget just because he's into her. I mean, in the original, he pretty obviously had the goal of getting Heather out of the way and facing Cody in the competition. Since while yes, Alejandro did help Heather beat Cody in the tiebreaker to face her in the finale, that was only after he was briefly convinced that it was going to be a repeat of action where the winner is decided by a popular vote, and sighed in release when Chris confirmed this wasn't the case. So yeah, all this is to say, even if Alejandro could work his magic to give Heather a leg up, I don't think he would. And again, considering Heather technically only got to the end because of Cody's help with the horse, without him there to do that since he'd now just be in Sierra's arms as she bull rushes through the challenge, there's simply no way Heather can save herself here. So there's no tiebreaker this time, Sierra just carries Cody to the finish line, leaving Heather in the dust. Now, I do think Chris would want to stir up some type of drama, so I imagine he would force both Cody and Sierra to have helpers that don't actually help them. So I guess Cody would get Duncan and Gwen, since obviously he's jealous of their relationship, and Sierra would get Heather and Courtney, since they're both super competitive, but they also hate each other and would have no real interest in helping Sierra win. Now, with that said, there's literally nothing Chris can do to stop Sierra from, once again, literally carrying Cody up the volcano, which she'd obviously want to do, until they get to the lava stepping stones, where Cody doesn't want to put Sierra in any more danger than she already is, and Cody getting sad over Gwen being taken would also upset Sierra a bit at this point. But with the newfound respect Cody had for Sierra in the previous episode, he'd pull himself together by the second half of this episode, like after the lava stepping stones. However, before that, I do think Sierra tackles Duncan in a fit of rage for distracting Cody through rizzing up Gwen, and everyone would try to get her off him, but to no avail. So in a panic, Gwen cuts a bunch of the traps and ends up trapping both Cody and Sierra under a cage and P Piano, respectively, even though she only intended to get Sierra. Feeling bad, Gwen helps Cody up from the trap, and shortly after, Duncan is able to escape from Sierra, even though she ultimately manages to topple the cage on top of her. She'd turn into a fuming bullet train, running all the way up the volcano and be way ahead of Cody, about to win. But right before she throws her pineapple sacrifice in, Cody would stop her and apologize to her for getting distracted by Gwen, and that she's the only one he really wants. While Sierra doesn't believe him at first, Cody says he truly does love her and that it took him so long to realize it because of how many boundaries she crossed. And when Sierra tells Cody she thought she was just showering him with love, Cody says he appreciates the affection, but she just goes too far sometimes. But he knows it's something she can work through and that they can and should be together. And Sierra obviously forgives Cody after hearing this, and they hug, which everyone says, aww, too. Followed by Heather and Alejandra also having a romantic kiss as he confesses his love to her afterwards. The alternate endings barely matter since, let's be honest, Cody and Sierra are splitting the money either way. But in both endings, Sierra wants to let Cody win by throwing a sacrifice into the volcano, and they both hold hands while doing it. Only in Sierra's ending, Cody actually stops her before she does this and says she deserves to win more than he does, so they just grab her sacrifice instead. But yeah, effectively the same thing happens either way. Feral Zeke tries to steal the money, but considering both Heather and Chris 
Chris were able to tussle for the briefcase for a bit before accidentally launching Zeke into the volcano, Sierra could just curb stomp him and knock him out in like three seconds, and she's way stronger than Heather or Chris. Because Alejandro doesn't make it to the finale, he doesn't get submerged in lava and isn't put in the robot suit, while Zeke still gets launched out of the volcano and ends up in the cave for the next two seasons, so revenge is kept exactly the same, and we can just skip straight to All Stars. Uh, holy fuck. Oh, it's been coming. So because Sierra already won in World Tour, she no longer returns to All-Stars since she explicitly was only back to try and win for her and Cody, and says she would have won if she didn't blow up the plane, which obviously holds true in this rewrite. And since in both endings, Sierra has no reason to return, she would now be replaced by Lashana, who in my opinion is the Gen 1 female contestant that deserves the spot the most, arguably as much or even more so than Sierra does. So besides Lashana replacing Sierra, the rest of the cast is the same, and so are the teams, but now for the first challenge. Sierra never sits on Courtney in the cart, and Lashana jumps into the water for the key, but still finds a dud. But there is another important change, which is that Alejandro is no longer in the robot suit. So when Lightning and Duncan both try to force Scott to jump, instead of them accidentally hitting the robot off the cliff, Lightning just tackles Scott and chucks him off the cliff, which obviously does nothing because he still wouldn't be able to find the correct key. And because of that, Zoe would now be able to find the correct key, winning the challenge for the heroes, which means Scott gets eliminated for his cowardice, costing the villains the challenge. Heather and Alejandro might vote for each other, but everyone else votes Scott, so he can't save himself no matter what. This episode is mostly the same. Lashana might not be quite as strong or fast of a digger as Sierra, but she's a lot more focused and less insane. So the heroes still win the challenge, with Lashana getting along with the rest of her team just fine, besides probably Courtney, and is probably the closest with Lindsay. Anyway, Lightning still miscounts the amount of statue pieces and gets kicked off. This episode is also mostly the same. I imagine Lashana would offer to guard Sam with Courtney since she wouldn't trust her, and that mistrust would be outright confirmed when Courtney deliberately uses Sam as a human shield against Joe. So now, basically, the entire Heroes team is against Courtney. But Zoe still beats Joe in the shootout, so the villains still lose and Joe is voted out. Duncan and Courtney still switch teams, except now Courtney is much happier to switch, since even though she hates Gwen and doesn't like being labeled a villain, it's still worth it to switch teams, since obviously the Heroes team now all dislike her more than they did before. Now, because we know Lashana is really good at eating challenges based off the fact she nearly beat Owen in the gross eating challenge in Island, I imagine the Heroes finish their pancakes a bit sooner than they did before, especially since they're still real pancakes with traps instead of just completely inedible stuff, and plus the villains don't have Scott anymore. However, Sam would still stuff his pockets with pancakes as an emergency stash in fear of returning to Boney Island, and because of that, the heroic hamsters still automatically forfeit the challenge, and I don't think Lashana and Lindsay being here changes the outcome. Duncan along with those two are definitely voting for Sam, and while Mike, Zoe, and Cameron all like Sam, I think they still vote for him since Courtney isn't on the team anymore, and it was ultimately Sam's screw-up that cost them the challenge, so there's really no one else to vote for over him since they also like everyone else. Because Scott isn't here to run across the bridge and accidentally cut it loose after shaking off the rabid bunny, the whole villains team gets across it and wins the challenge by a landslide since they cut the bridge afterwards. The Blue Moon still grants Mal full control, and because of that, Duncan still recognizes him as Mal, and after confronting him, Duncan tells Lashana about Mal too. At first, she doesn't believe him, but after the challenge, when the two of them talk to Cameron about how strange Mike is acting, they all are now aware of Mal's presence. This is because Cameron is no longer distracted or preoccupied by Sierra's insane stalkery, so he'd be able to think more clearly. And since he was able to decipher Mike's alter personalities in Season 4, with Duncan and Lashana's help, he'd be able to discover Mal here too. Now this vote is interesting, because even though Cameron, Duncan, and Lashana are all voting for Mal, aka Mike, Mike and Zoe vote for Lindsay for being the most useless member of their team, even though they don't really have beef with her, because, you know, who else are they going to vote for? Mike has no idea anyone is voting for him, because obviously he just got control of his body back from Mal, and wouldn't know about any of the events this episode leading to his evil persona being exposed to some of his team members. So he wouldn't really have any sort of plan based off of that. And Lindsay actually votes herself, since in the first episode she did that in canon from already being exhausted from the game, and now that she had to run in heels in a haunted forest in the middle of the night while being attacked by the wildlife, she'd want out even more so than before. This means that both Mike and Lindsay
Mackenzie get three votes each, but instead of a tiebreaker, Chris just decides to send both of them to the villains team, since that's what he does originally to Cameron, only he wouldn't volunteer for elimination this time since Sierra isn't torturing him. Mike is still back in full control, and he'd still choose to look for eggs with Zoe, since spending time with her and keeping her safe is way more important to him than winning the game or keeping a good profile with his team. The other three members of the Heroes team would be starting to think Zoe is a lost cause, with her still trusting Mike even after he switched teams, except for Cameron since he'd still be friends with her. Mike and Zoe still find the basket with the eggs, but Zoe points out that if they bring back all those eggs and only pour them into one of their team's baskets, the losing team is almost definitely going to vote one of them off for essentially helping the opposing team win, so they might as well not even bring it. Mike agrees, and upon coming to this realization, the two stop looking for eggs entirely and just focus on looking for the immunity idol instead, since Chris said it was located somewhere on the challenge grounds. Now, I have no way of knowing for sure whether they'd find it or not, since originally Heather just kinda stumbles upon it, but considering how athletic and agile Mike and Zoe are this season, even in their base forms, I think if both of them are exclusively focusing on looking for it, they should be able to find it before Heather does, especially since it was located near ground level, so it wouldn't even be that hard to grab. Although the weird thing about this episode is Mike actually originally finds it in this huge green egg after it explodes, but doesn't actually see it, and then it somehow ends up in an egg up on a cliff near the flying goat. So now I think Lashana finds the giant green egg and doesn't see it, and then after it somehow ends up high up in the nest, Zoe still finds it before Heather does, so dealing with those weird logistics, I still think Zoe finds it first. And even though she wants to give it to Mike, Mike refuses and tells her to hang on to it since she deserves it more, and like he says in the original, wants to protect her at all costs. And so Mike is still a big idiot and bonks himself over the head with a huge boulder, unleashing Mal permanently after the challenge. Now over on the villains, without Scott to accompany Courtney, I think Gwen would go with her and plead for forgiveness, and Courtney would let her do it only to make her life easier during the challenge, still being cold to her the whole time. And Heather and Alejandro still taunt each other, trying to convince Lindsay to vote the other, with neither of them really getting through to her. Now because Heather originally originally tries to turn everyone against Alejandro even before finding the immunity idol. She still tries to do that, but it wouldn't really work because she can't convince pairs of people that one of them is being targeted by him this time around. Courtney hates Gwen, Mike is paired with someone on the other team, and Lindsay is in her own world, so she can't really get anything done. But anyway, since Mike and Zoe never brought the big nest of eggs, I don't think the heroes win anymore, since the villains had more eggs than them before that, and with Duncan and Alejandro guarding the nests, I don't think Lashana and Cameron can find more eggs than everyone on on the villains team, even with Cameron's smarts. Now for the vote, everyone is voting for Zoe for still choosing to associate with Mal, with Cameron even admitting to and apologizing to Zoe for doing so. But Zoe has the immunity idol, meaning her vote is the only one that counts, and although I think she will ultimately forgive Cameron as a friend, she'd still vote for him because A, Zoe really likes Lashana and Duncan since the former is really strong, reliable, and friendly, and the latter is still on his nice boy arc, and she'd also just view Cameron voting for her and Mike as a more hurtful betrayal than the other two because, well, they they don't really know her as well as Cameron does. Zoe would feel a bit guilty after Cameron is flushed, but she'd still retain her conviction, with Cameron just telling Zoe to be careful. So with Mal now on the villains team and Zoe no longer getting a point, the villains obviously obliterate this challenge. Mal beats Izzy in the spider suit, Alejandro still beats his brother even harder since now Jose insults Heather to her face because she's still here. In fact, this actually strengthens their feelings for each other and lowers their animosity toward one another. And Gwen and Courtney still get a point for their team, so that's already three. The only thing I can see going in the hero's favor is Lashana fighting Izzy instead of Mike, since in Phobia Factor, her fear was shown to be Chef in a spider suit, so she might get that instead of Mal, but then Mal would just fight a bear or mutant gophers, which he'd obviously still beat because he's Mal. I know. I know, dumb plot armor is dumb, but the feats don't lie. So the villains still win 3-1. to one. Now, because the villains win, they decide who to eliminate on the heroes team, and with Sierra gone, they obviously choose Duncan. Gwen already dumped him, and she and Courtney hate him. Mal also wants to get rid of him because he's the most suspicious of him, and Heather, Alejandro, and Lindsay also probably think he's the biggest threat, and just wouldn't like him, so they also have no reason not to go along with this. So yeah, Duncan is no longer arrested in this timeline, he just gets booted the normal way. And now we've reached the merge, which looks quite different, actually. So Mal still sabotages all the vehicles, because of course he does, and still takes the boat for himself. Gwen and Courtney still make up at this point and take the speedboat, and Alejandro still takes his boat, but brings Heather with him this time since they now kinda like each other again. This leaves the other three with the raft, and since Cameron and Scott aren't here to propel Fang, they get completely left behind in the race, especially since even with Fang they still got last anyway. As for the others, I see no reason why Alejandro wouldn't just win again by sticking out his nose 
goes right before Courtney and Gwen pass him, and even though he doesn't take anyone to the spa hotel in the original, he'd now bring Heather with him this time, giving both of them immunity. As for the vote, Mal was originally able to rig the votes this episode, so I think he'd be able to do that again, and this time, instead of gunning for Cameron, he'd go for Lashana instead, since he knows she's been trying to turn Zoe against him, and with Cameron and Duncan out of the way, she's the only other person directly standing in his way. So unfortunately for Lashana, she gets screwed over. Feral Zeke would still be a thing, and so he still kidnaps Chris and hangs him over a pool of toxic waste down in the mines. And Chef still makes the same deal he does with the campers originally. Mao still tries to frame Alejandro for rigging the votes against Lashana, which works because Duncan never blows up Chris's bougie cottage, is never repulsed by Chris's naked body in the pool, meaning he never checks the DVD player, especially now that he's distracted by Heather. So Zoe fully buys that Alejandro rigged the votes against Lashana, making it even easier for him to cut Zoe off from everyone else, planting seeds of mistrust along the way. Since Mal was able to turn Cameron against everyone else and leave him hanging in the cave hole, leading to him being medically evacuated, I would say the same thing happens to Zoe, except Mal would need her vote and her loyalty to get further in the game, so he'd actually save her and everyone except Lindsay still ends up in Zeke's cage. The reason being that Zeke seemed to target teams of two when he had an opening. So my headcanon is that Lindsay would just make less noise than the others and ultimately stumble her way into stopping Zeke the same way Gwen did, awarding her immunity and permanent residence at the spa hotel until she gets eliminated or the game ends. While Mal is in the cage, instead of making it look like Cameron kissed Courtney, he'd make it look like Alejandro kissed Courtney instead, and he'd make it so that this happens in front of Heather. But the thing is, even though Heather doesn't trust Alejandro that much, she knows this trick, as proven with what she did to Trent and Island. So I don't really think it would work on her, since she'd see Mal shove Alejandro onto Courtney and know it was bull. And unlike Scott, who is head over heels in love with Courtney, Alejandro and Heather are both much more cynical and standoffish people, so the emotional manipulation aspect just wouldn't work nearly as much. So for the vote, Mal and Zoe vote Alejandro, and Alejandro and Heather vote Mike for trying to wedge them apart, but believe it or not, I actually think the other three vote for Heather, since they'd all be really pissed at her for her explanation about why she didn't buy the kiss. Gwen and Lindsay were both integral parts of Heather's sabotage involving Trent back in season one, and seeing her so blatantly avoid karma would remind them of how much they've always really hated Heather. And Courtney also hates her and is friends with Gwen, so Heather gets three votes, beating out Mal and Alejandro each only getting two. Because Alejandro wouldn't know about Mal framing him for rigging the votes, and also knows he wasn't technically the cause of Heather being eliminated, his beef with Mal this episode no longer exists. In fact, with Heather now gone, I think he'd try to make an alliance with Mike and Zoe, since they're the only new gen cast members left, and therefore are the least likely to hold his nefarious past against him. Zoe is against the idea, but Mal actually loves this idea, since he views it as quite possibly the biggest threat in the game now being his pawn. And I think Zoe would ultimately get on board after Alejandro deliberately lets them win the challenge, showing he's totally down to work with them. So instead of taking Alejandro down, Mal uses his vote along with Zoe's to get rid of Lindsay, because between her, Gwen, and Courtney, he doesn't consider any of them to be a major threat and really just wants the spa hotel to himself, without someone there to meddle with his plans. Plus, getting Gwen and Courtney to vote Lindsay out is much easier. Unfortunately, I have to keep Courtney's stupid-ass chart in the mix, as well as Mal exposing it. However, this doesn't completely fuck her over this time, since I think the chart would actually show Courtney wanting to bring Gwen to the finale, with Zoe still being the next boot, and Mike and Alejandro both being people she doesn't trust and wants to get rid of. So she and Gwen still retain their friendship. And because Courtney originally was able to cross the finish line first, even with everyone against her, with Gwen's help, she'd now be able to avoid the bird puke and complete the challenge even more efficiently. And even if Chris does still make the contestants eat the ice cream, Courtney has an iron stomach and would no longer have gross shit on her Sunday beyond maybe a few burnt coals after Mal screws with the ingredients, so she'd be able to beat Zoe in the eating contest too. So Courtney wins immunity, but with the other three working together, she knows Gwen is in trouble. And as such, because they know Mike and Zoe are close, Courtney and Gwen both approach Alejandro and beg him to swing the vote against Zoe, pointing out how she and Mike are obviously a powerhouse couple who will weed everyone else out until the end. So he has to get rid of Zoe now while he has the chance. And while I don't think he'd go with this at first, I actually think he'd overhear Mal talking to Zoe about planning to betray him behind his back, so this would fully convince him to vote with Gwen and Courtney, giving Zoe the boot as a result. So now the beef between Alejandro and Mal would be in full effect, with Mal's personality becoming public knowledge at this point. This time, Alejandro would need to get the diamond from Fang, and Courtney has to get the eggs from the Yeti. And since Duncan never blew up the cottage, Chris wouldn't want anyone going anywhere near it, so instead he makes Gwen go through the mines to find a bar of gold. 
And considering how Gwen isn't great with dark confined spaces underground, I think she would eventually just give up and focus on helping Courtney instead. So the two of them manage to bring back the Yeti's eggs after tumbling down the mountain while getting chased by the Yeti, giving Courtney immunity. Meanwhile, Mal wouldn't even attempt to find his loot and just set a trap for Alejandro the same way he did for Scott on the pirate ship. Only this time, he doesn't even pretend to work with him at first. So Mal ends up bringing back an unconscious Alejandro and convinces Chris to let him off the hook for bringing back an injured contestant, but Alejandro would have known Mal was planning on doing something like this from the start. So he'd leave a trail of fish for Fang to follow Mal back, with even putting some in Mal's pocket without him noticing. So Fang literally chases Mal all the way back to where Chris is, which technically still counts as bringing back his loot, leaving Gwen as the only one not technically empty-handed. So to her and Courtney's dismay, Gwen is eliminated. This leaves Courtney with the choice of either Mal or Alejandro to bring to the finale. This leaves Courtney with the choice of either Mal or Alejandro to bring to the finale. And this is tough because Courtney's chart didn't really account for this, so she'd really just have to go off intuition for who she thinks is the easier target. But I'm pretty sure she'd probably choose Mike to bring with her, because in the original she says, and I quote, Mike is the only wild card, but I'm pretty sure I can crush him. Whereas with Alejandro, she knows how devilish he is from World Tour, so she'd take her chances with the new guy. Alejandro tells Courtney she doesn't know what she's getting into, but she insists she can handle herself. Courtney gets Gwen and Duncan as helpers while Mal gets Zoe and Cameron. And everyone else gets let out of the balloons because I'm not doing the stupid everyone flies into the sun thing. The Mal plot goes basically exactly the same, only he's obviously trying to attack Courtney instead of Zoe. But Zoe would still go after him in the water when Mike defeats Mal once and for all, and they kiss and rekindle like in the original. Cameron apologizes to both of them for not having more faith, but they both understand and forgive him. Meanwhile, Gwen and Duncan would be arguing the whole time, with Gwen insisting them getting together was unfair to Courtney, which really pisses off Duncan because he really liked her and despises Courtney. And with with all their bickering, they're not much of a help to Courtney at all, which doesn't matter too much because she can do just fine on her own. After Mike comes back, he and Courtney are neck and neck on the top platform, and each ending is determined by the same way as in canon, except Courtney taunts Chef in Mike's ending the same way Mike does in Zoe's ending in the original. So basically, whoever doesn't piss off Chef on the top platform pulls out the sword first and wins. Gwen still kisses Cameron because she does originally, and she dislikes Duncan even more than in the original, and the island still sinks because of the fracking machine. So that was the video. I have pretty mixed feelings with how this turned out. I think it's pretty cool to explore a timeline where Cody and Sierra get a happy ending, but I think All Star still didn't turn out that great. I would have liked to see Lashana make it to the finale, and I honestly would have preferred to get Mal out earlier and replace him with something else, but hey, it was still interesting to write out how everything plays out. I'm actually going to put up a poll in my next community tab asking you guys what Total Drama video you want first. One of them is the All Stars Part 2, and the other is something I won't reveal until I make that post. So yeah, see you for whatever wins that poll.